somewhere. <laughs> We've had a bit uh, last night. There was two big storms that I was in the middle of around two o'clock in the morning and uh, knocked down some trees coming out of uh, Woodruff. Last night? Yep. Yeah. I, I was at work last night, and it was it, it was pretty bad. I, I actually seen three of the big lightning crackle pop down to the ground um, while I was at work, and, man, the wind was it, – it, it was shaking everything. Yeah. Yeah, I'm uh, trying to see if I can get us back. Uh, we're, like I say, we're still recording, so out of the way, um, we're going to uh, we're going to keep moving with it. But uh, so I don't know. My internet's fine. When I did a little internet test right now, internet's internet's fine. Now the upload, I didn't give it a chance to finish the upload, but uh, the download is great. Um, we'll see what the upload is looking like here in just a second, because um, that means everything. Download can be as powerful as it can be but if that upload ain't ain't hitting on nothing but yeah. we're recording so yeah it, like i say if it's, it all depends on the um, uh, internet outside yeah. yeah even here i mean it could be down the road or anything like that it can, it can affect uh yeah still got there. still got good upload there um so i'm just waiting on that but uh before we get started with him because if i can just bring it back on there we'll still get him so that, that'll be all that matters and uh it uh it may work out yeah, Jeff, look like you got uh, Mary uh, Mary Hill there. Her says, Jeff oh. Bailey for sheriff. Did you end it? Yeah, uh, yeah, I <laughs> ended it because I'm thing. trying I appreciate to Mary. trying to come yeah. back to it now. Let's see if we can just get her back on Facebook and we'll. Uh, yeah, we got John Sherfield and. Uh, All right. Watching. So we got we're we're gonna go straight back. I'm not even gonna mess with restream because you know restream could be having issues. Storms they got to run on servers too. So. We're just going to bypass them all together and just go straight to Facebook. I go think that'd it. be good. So we're back on Facebook, uh, Restream. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break from that. And uh, as soon as we come back, we're going to get right into it with Jeff before this tornado rips the building off. Uh, you know, yeah. we'll still broadcast while we're flying, though. Uh, you know, we have no problem that'd with that. good coverage. Yeah, oh, yeah absolutely. Yeah, yeah, be like Jerry's drone. Yeah, we can see. <laughs> See Kyle going by now fixing his hair. <laughs> be like oh, yeah, line. the hair. Oh, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, guys, we'll be right back, and we'll have Jeff here with us. It's the KC Show, coming at you live inside 379. Or give us a call today, 864-424-9530. Mention this ad to receive an extra 5% off your loan. Affordable Title Loans Proper introduction. All right, well, here we are. We're here, and now we're back with Mr. Yes, Bailey. Yes, Let's bring yes. him up on screen. There he is. Uh, Jeff has uh, been anxiously awaiting, uh, and we appreciate him being on. He is currently running for candidate of Union County Sheriff, and we appreciate him so much for being on. Um, uh, I, I believe this is one of our top tier candidates. Uh, we have a lot this year, but I do, Jeff, I do believe Jeff is one of the, one of the, uh, has a lot of experience in the legal world, and he's going to tell you all about his experience, and, and we're looking forward to hearing from him. So without further ado, we're going to, because we're running about 10 minutes behind because of the uh, storm. Um, so Jeff, just uh, just kind of tell us about you. Tell us tell us what you've done in your past and your experience and everything. Let's just let's just get into it like that. Okay. Um, well, I appreciate you having me on the show tonight. Um, it, it takes a lot of work to put this show on. I found out since I've been here, but uh, I'm still amazed by all the equipment. But um, I'm Jeff Bailey. I'm running for uh, sheriff of Union County. Um, I've been married 33 years to Kim Bailey. Um, I have two sons, uh, Aaron and Ethan Bailey. Um, I'm sure I'm sure they're watching tonight. I hope so. And uh, 
I'm a graduate of the University of South Carolina with a uh, business degree in sales and management. Um, after I graduated uh, college, I went on to work for Probation Pro, which I spent seven years with Probation Pro, uh, supervising individuals, uh, prosecuting cases in court, the uh, violations in court, um, at doing uh, things like extraditions and stuff like that. Uh, after I left Probation Pro, I actually started uh, a landscaping business, and uh, I did that for a couple of years before I became a judge. Uh, as I was appointed uh, as a judge, I served in that capacity for about 18 years, and um, that was that was a, a learned experience, um, a lot of training, you know, learning the laws and, and doing exactly. Um, you know, it, learning the elements of the law. Right. That's 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 the main thing. You got to know what the elements are. That's right. Because uh, that that's you know. kind of an issue with with some cops that can kind of get you in trouble as as far as county wise. Because sometimes they think the law is this way, but in actuality, the person that they're arguing with is actually the one that's right because they're there just more so to enforce the law. They're not a knowledgeable right. of the law, and that includes a lot of sheriffs. To be honest, you know, a lot of sheriffs can have that issue too. But um, sorry, I didn't mean to cut That's you. That's all right. And, and and like I said, um, as a magistrate, uh, I did that for eighteen years and uh, met a lot of people that way, and uh, that was an experience. Uh, after that, um, I decided to uh, oh, run for sheriff, and uh, so I had to resign that position. Um, so yeah. that's kind of that's where we're at today. Uh, the last term, I you know, last time uh, at sixteen, I ran. And uh, I had to resign my position as magistrate at that point in time in order to run. I got you. So, uh, and I'm a member of uh, Lockhart First Baptist Church. All right. Uh, active member, uh, member of uh, Lockhart Lodge 244, Masonic Lodge. And, um, you know, that's, that's pretty much. Now, which one is Lockhart First Baptist? Which one is that one? That's the down, one down down in the yeah, valley down there. In the flat. So, okay. It's down in the flat. Yeah, we're. The Baptist we're, Church is there, the Baptist Church. Yeah, we're, we're, we're free will. Here. Methodist. Up there near the um, hot spot. Okay. Yeah, we're we're like our free will Baptist, you know, right, right across from hot spot like Mike said. Right. Or not hot spot. Well, no, that's yeah, hot spot. That's, yeah, that's right. Do you uh a question, do you ever miss it, um, uh, being a magistrate? I do. Uh like I said, you you deal with a lot of people and and those people come in and you know, they sometimes people get carried away, um, with with that, but you you have to be a good listener because those people their their problems mm -hmm. are big to them. Yeah, and therefore you have to you have to be a good listener, pay attention, and and try to give them the best advice you can because you know it's in that situation they they feel like they're pretty much right, and and it was my job and the other judges' job to explain the law. And right. Actually, and, and tell them because I mean it's it's case. the law. I mean it, it's not my personal opinion. That's right, and and that's what the judge does. He interprets that that law and and says this is this is where you stand or you know there you know i i beg to differ with you you know that i know your opinion matters but you just have to you have to spend a lot of time talking to people and yeah. and you can't just just cut them short right. because they're like i said it's their concern and then they're really concerned about the you know what happened to them they're a victim of something they feel like and, and you have to take the time to spend it with them to you know, prepare yeah. them and let them know exactly what the law is. Yeah, because sometimes even if they lose a case, if they don't feel like they were heard, you know, if they were cut off or done, like you said, if they're not heard, they don't feel like they got a fair trial. That's but right. if you can let them be heard and they still lose, then they, a lot of times they probably are like, okay, well, I didn't know this was the law. You know, right. it kind of makes it a little easier. And it's kind of, I mean, you <clears throat> you pretty much have to, you, you kind of educate them in how the law works yeah. and the procedures that you have to go through in order to, you know, present your case in court. And yeah. that was, that was, you know, part of my job, you yeah. know, to, to but, make sure they understood. But Jeff, Jeff uh, after being in that uh, position, that capacity for that length of time, uh, a question I have for you, why do you want to be sheriff? Well, um, after, after being a magistrate and, and actually seeing cases being made and, and uh, different things that, that, that I felt was not fair, at, at some point in time, um, I, it kind of it struck me that hey, uh, maybe you need to step up and and show some leadership how to make a change. You know, if, if you feel like something is not right, then that's that's what that's what you should do. You should have the courage to step forward and do that. And 
So that's that's kind of the, the reason I wanted to. Uh, there's, it's not it's not that it, I just want the title of sheriff. I mean that's that's a, a respectable title, and it and you have to earn that respect. But you just it, it's just it's inside of me to try to make better the department better and make better for the people of Union. And that's the that's the key here. It's about the people of Union. It's not about me being sheriff. When it comes down to it, you know, right? You've got to, and, and with you knowing the law, you know, in, in that capacity that you're just, just just in the magistrate, uh, that, that that's going to uh, you think it's going to be a plus for you to bring your experience there also into uh, being sheriff. Yeah, I mean, it's you know, it, you had to you had to interpret the law, and 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 make sure that the elements of the crime that they were you know that the sheriff's department deputies were requesting that you know they were asking present probable cause to. To say that you know this guy did this or this female did this, so you have to you have to know the law and you have to understand the elements that that the criteria it takes to charge that that crime. Because if you if you have if you have the ability to take a man's freedom, then that's that's power. Yeah. And if you're gonna take a man's freedom, you need to make sure why you're taking it. Well, know why right. you're taking it. Don't do it because you can. That's right. right. Do it or, because or it's vendetta. it's the law. Yeah. Well, I. I have a question, uh, a big question, a lot of uh, the, the, probably the biggest question surrounding your candidacy. Um, a lot of people were asking, they have asked us about it. And, you know, I, I said, well, once we have Jeff on, we'll let him talk about it. Our, it seems like one of the biggest. And, and the reason is, is because of, of how our presidential candidates and races have been uh, from this last term. Uh, a lot of people wanted to know. What made you decide to go from Republican to Democrat? Well, it's you know uh, the sheriff's position is really should be it should be nonpartisan in my opinion. Correct. And the reason I say that is, you if 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 I was running for the legislature or the Senate, then those people have the the ability to pass laws and make laws, and and that's fine. And and that that might have something to do with you being a Democrat or Republican to what right. you believe or think, but. As sheriff, you have to be a sheriff to Democrats and Republicans. Right, right. And so I, I chose to I chose to run on the Democratic ticket this time. And being honest with you, it's I think that we're at a crossroad now in Union County to where we have to make a change. And I felt like to give me the best opportunity to to win the sheriff's race, I needed to do that. Yeah. And, and and it's because I feel so strongly about we need change. We need to fix a problem. And that's exactly why I did it. That's right. it. There's there's no hidden agenda. There's nothing. I mean, that's exactly why I did it. Yeah, because if you look at it, you you had an easier road, to be honest, going to the Republican side of the room because there was only one one opponent at that point. Right. So, you know, you, you kind of took. I feel like the way you took it is if, okay, if I win the Democratic side out of all these candidates that are on the Democratic side, then I probably got a really good chance at taking it all the way. Yeah, well, you you really know at the end of the day on June the 9th, you're going to know whether Union County really wants change. Yeah. They want something different. That's a good way to look at it. And, and that's that's kind of the way I approach it. And, and, you know, you can – there's no need running from it. Yep. I want to know. I want to know on June night what what's Union County's goal, what's the voters' goal, what yep. do the people want. It's not about me. It's not. It's not what I want. Yeah. It, it's not like it's. It's not a. It's not a power thing to me. It's. Yeah. It's. Uh. We need leadership. We need management. And and there's a. We we got to gain the respect of the people. That's You've right. got to earn respect. You just don't. You don't. People just don't endow you with respect. That's I mean, right. You earn it. And it's going to take a while to earn that respect. But I'm. I'm. I'm willing to put forth the time and effort to to get that back for the people of Union and the deputies and the sheriff's department. Jeff, uh, what what there's about like seven seven other candidates. So what distinguishes you from the other candidates? I think the people that that know me in Union County uh, know what I stand for. Uh, I've always been honest with people. I, I'm truthful. I, I, I have integrity. I have morals, and and I want those things. Those things stand out, and and it, it keeps you on the right track. And, and I think you've got to be on the right track because the, sh the sheriff's job is is is, is special. And, and but there's there's ways that you can be special to the people. You can you can actually, you know, I feel like it's going to be a great platform to be a role model because our kids need role models. And and I feel like if you get involved and I'm involved with the schools, 
and, and, and our school resource officers, those are a valuable asset to Union County. We just need to, we need to get the training they need, you know, and I need to, I need to understand exactly what we need. And that's, you'll get great feedback from, from the kids. And, and so those are some of the reasons that, that I think it's real important. Okay. There's some uh, questions coming through on the um, chat. Uh, some people want to know what's your views on uh, using the radar, uh, running radar. Radar, I mean, you know, I, I really don't have a view on that right now, but uh, in the past, my understanding of, of, of being a judge is it's just not good for voters. Yeah. That's to be honest with you. You know, they, if, you, if you got deputies, you know, it's an elected position. So if you're out writing tickets, then you make people's insurance go up. Yeah. So I mean, I'm not saying we shouldn't do it. I'm just saying you ought to be trained in what you're doing and, and, right. and do it for the right reasons. Yeah. You know, if you're going to run radar, I mean, it, I don't think it ought to be a, a source of revenue. Right, that, right that's, right. that's, now, right. yeah, that's, you're, you're that's actually, a daggone you're, good answer right you're, there. You're affecting, <laughs> people, you're affecting their livelihood and their, their monies because the money, their insurance is going to go up, yeah. but they really they shouldn't be speeding, yeah. bottom line. Something else you but, said right there is uh, training, and that's a, a lot of that needs to be done on more aspects of the job because um, you can hear a lot of people talking – uh, police uh, talk how they just lack certain training to be able to perform certain jobs. Yeah, and, and, and training is very important. You know, as a judge, I actually, the training, my continued legal education I had to take, uh, that was with other law enforcement officers. So, you know, I've been to the DUI schools and, and domestic violence schools, and but that's a, training is a key. There's and, and my big thing is, I'll be honest with you, is the, the road deputies, they need more training. They're 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 eye to eye with these people on a on a regular basis, and and they need to have every every asset they can have. Can I disposal. can I ask you a question? I don't even know if you'll be able to answer this one or even be able to answer this one. And uh, because uh, you were a magistrate in the union for how long? Eighteen years. Eighteen years. So, is there any amount of cases that you could probably say like one out of five or two out of five? If for every ticket that I guess that would come in there. How many of those tickets ever got thrown out? Like, is there a percentage in the top of your head to where it just, it just wasn't, as you say, they didn't have enough training to where they made a mistake to where a ticket was possibly thrown out. Do you, do you ever, did you have a lot of that or not so much or how did well, that ever run? About in traffic cases yes. or just, uh, just, I mean, in, in traffic general. cases, pretty much, and you know, because well, that's that, one that affects most people. Yeah, well, there, there was there was very few actual by the county traffic cases. Yeah, uh, I mean, it's it's not a whole lot. It's not like the highway patrol, which you know that's right. the main focus is, is is doing the tickets. Right. But uh, I mean, it was you know you you'd have seatbelt tickets, but it, it's right. I'm saying, and, and which you you can't just I I wouldn't be a part of just throwing a ticket out. Right. Okay, so those people that come in and Probably, I say maybe five percent, ten percent of the tickets. They're not actually thrown out. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, but from the lack of training, it's not that. But you you get into a situation where, you know, for example, if, if you get caught and you're running seventy five and a fifty five, you're twenty over. So you know your your ticket the the points go up, and and the monies go up. Right. So as a judge, when they came in, and I did it for everybody. It's not like I was dismissing, dismissing the ticket, but with the consent of the of the actual officer, I would actually cut it down to ten or you know right. ten over, which would reduce down to two points. And 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 but see, you got to understand they they were speeding, but you know you still got to pay you still got to pay for that. You got right. to you got to pay something. So, but it, there's no sense putting a financial burden on people. Or just because you can't, right. you know, you, you got to, you got to talk to people and, and communicate and see, see what you're dealing with. Now you got some people who just come in and want to argue. So, yeah. you know, th there's no sense arguing. You, you evidently there. I'm sure that didn't happen every day. Oh, uh, well, yeah, so, <laughs> but, but you know, just like the, the, if you're trained to run the radar, just like state troopers, you know, they're, they're ready to testify in court, uh, yeah. how that radar is, is set up, yeah. how it's tested. And, and so you, you, you can argue the point, but. I mean, usually it's, it's, it's a, it's a huge you. point. Well, I feel you know, sure that uh, the big county is.
we'll be right back with uh with with the commercial right here free quotes and your satisfaction is guaranteed give a call today at 864-427-1991 and let them know that the kc show sent you Hello. Uh-huh. All right. So we're back. We're back. Sorry about the audio. Sorry about that, but we, uh, we still got to hear everything for the most part, except for my part. Camera, that's when it did it. But uh, Mr. Balin, we're going to get more. Bearing with us tonight that the storm is really just kind of us a loop a little bit, but we're still going strong about it man happy about it we're, we're going to get right back to mr bailey because we'll be trying to take questions uh from people in the chat as well we 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 about 10 or 15 minutes if that but uh we're going to get as many questions to, uh because elections so we we've got to make sure that we get as much information out there as we Good and decisive and educated vote. What again? Don't <laughs> vote because you went to a court one day and that guy happened to be there. Don't vote for stuff like you need to vote based on what you hear here. Other, uh, I did question Jerry. I guess now's a good time. Uh, we are actually going with WBCU's March or May the 29th um, but they're still possible as well but as of right now we will be uh, live streaming that debate as well. we uh, we were able to talk with and we're gonna we're gonna bring to get us I don't care if we do it it's it's good to get that information out there I didn't know they was having debate when did they uh yeah, they orchestrated out there on the 29th, even with us um, going to get this, we really haven't got the everything worked out completely the yet. Venue. We're still working that on that. The venue also, right now, uh, we're working on it, but it's still going to be set for May 29th. This coronavirus, the election process. I mean, really, you think about it. I mean, it's been a nightmare. So, to the people who do win the elections this year, because man, they went through the water. Over, they went through it to get elected. So, power to them for sure. But we're going to get back to Bailey, um, and we appreciate being patient with us with all our little really has threw us for a loop but strong and what i will still re-upload the complete record that way if you want to go back and watch this full version of the recorded probably so mike you want to go with the uh next question or you want to ask a i haven't been reading them as much I think on I have chat. one here let me let me <clears throat> yeah oh. yeah here's here's a here's actually a really good one I, let me ask him this one real quick um somebody asked how long had you office before you realized or that that a situation was arising in the uh in the magistrate's office and money and things like that. We've we've actually discussed this uh, here. Uh, by the question, I'm glad I read it because that that is a really really for everybody. Yeah. Well, I actually, uh, you know, I was a part time magistrate, up, and then that's, that's working in the magistrate's office in the main office there. Um, to because he had grown so so large that he couldn't handle it. He spent all his time in the courtroom. You know? right. So um, so 
that that's a subject that I don't like to talk about. Because number one, um, that that situation, and that I cared, about. and you know, it, it it came down. But I, I was probably there five or six weeks, and I realized something was going. I started uh, doing my investigative work and verifying things. And I realized there were some uh, issues with the finance. Mm -hmm. And so, it, Crocker at this time is retired. Coming back, just like in the territory, he's going to be the chief magistrate at that time. The chief magistrate. So, it, for the day to day operation. Therefore, if I'm going to be that title and be responsible for it, make sure that it was up to par. So I did, I did my checking and I, and I found it and, um, story short, it, it, it ended up charges being filed, uh, which you know, it, it's, it's a sad day because I, you know, at three o'clock in the morning, I'll never, I was sitting on my couch at home and, and I judge Crocker up and I told him, I said, I know you were on your retirement party, but we got and so uh, got to go to Columbia. We've got to get this straight out, and and that's what we did. Encourage to do that because they that's your friends. But when it the money belongs to the, the taxpayers, and I what was right, and and I and I did back and. Uh, like I said, it's a terrible situation that I really don't want to talk about, but bottom line, it was corrected, uh, Judy, and we, everybody moved on. You know, I, I don't, don't want to worry for that because it was a tough thing to do. It was just, it was my job, but I'm, I'm telling you, put up with that. I cannot what? tolerate. It was law, right? Yeah, I mean, you, you, you don't... I, decision which to make and and i did that and and i i mean i don't i don't have a because you know if your friends they put you there so you there a lot of people that uh that, that when they do um Consequences. Uh, you didn't. You didn't put. Uh, you didn't make them do that crime. You didn't make them do this, even though they're friends with you. Mm -hmm. They put themselves in that position, and they know the consequences. It's like any any crime. You know, it's the old saying. You know, if you uh, can't do the time, then mm -hmm. don't do the crime. That's right. Uh, but, but you know, if 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 I would have said, okay, well, we'll 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 get this worked out somehow, and we'll just won't have anything. You know, we won't bring it up. I'm just as guilty as they were. Correct. So, and I'll promise you, I'm not going to jail for anybody. So, I'm going to speak my mind, and I'm going to, I'm going to say what's right. And and if I determine that there, there's something going on, it is what it is. That's right. So, I don't have a problem with it, and I can I can sleep at night when I do that. I don't I don't like I'm not going to look over my shoulder. So that's 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 how I feel about those situations. Mike, you got a question? I, uh, and I do want to, I'm cutting you off. Just sorry about the uh, the sound going in and out, but it should be fixed now. Just It's just it. this storm just going in and out. But we'll, uh, we're definitely, we we might end up getting you back uh, and doing an, another one. We'll we'll ask different questions and stuff like that, but do another one. Hey, just, you know, this storm's just really packing a punch right now. But go ahead, Mike, I'm sorry. Um, what do you think, um, is the biggest need right now in the sheriff's department um or what would what would you do to fill the need uh that you think we need the most help with the need at, at this point in time in my opinion is leadership and and you have to have leadership you know if it you've got you've all you've always got good people but their only good is their leadership so when you add the leadership integrity honesty transparency you, you you put all those things together 
that that's us building a winning team, and and that's what you have to have. There, this it's not about I. It's it's about a team. I can't I can't do it by myself. You have to surround yourself with good people, and people's got to buy into the program, and they've got to understand that what we're doing here is we're we're trying to bring the respect back to the sheriff's office, and and that's that's what we need. I mean, it is all about bringing the respect back, the management, the, the overseeing the all the checking accounts and, and making sure that, you know, everything is where it's supposed to be. I mean, you have to hold people accountable. And, and, and that is what I feel like the sheriff's job is. You have to hold people accountable. They might be your friends. They might have been there for 25 years. That's fine. You hold them accountable for their actions. That is, that is the biggest issue, I think. Well, that makes sense. And you treat them, and you treat them fair. I, I, I'm not going to treat Mr. Jones different than I do Mrs. Smith. You know they're they're all they're all, you know, a part of the team, and, and that's why that 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 I've been studying. I've been doing some research on the uh, South Carolina law enforcement accreditation, and there's there's sheriff's department. I think there's nine sheriff's departments already there that's it's under accredited by the state, and and what that does, and, and a lot of city police departments. But what that does is, it's 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 help. They're come in and they'll help you set up policies and procedures. And it tells you that this is the policies, this is procedures. They do audits of evidence, and you know this is just what I'm researching. And 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 there's a lot of different things in order to be accredited by the state. But the reason a whole lot of sheriff's departments aren't involved in this is because it takes the discretion away from the sheriff. That's fine with me. I mean, because if it's cut and dried, and we have an officer who violates policies or procedures, they know what the penalty is, and so does the next person. This one don't get. Better treatment than this. It's cut and dried, and I follow the same policies. So, uh, you know, that's the main thing. I'm going to follow the same policies and procedures they are, and if I step out of line, then I should be, you know, yeah, held accountable. penalized. Yeah, i got to be held accountable. But, you know, the main thing is, as sheriff, if I'm elected sheriff, I have to make sure that the monies, the actions of the deputies, the actions of the investigators, school resource officers, everybody involved with the sheriff's department has got to be above board and beyond reproach. That's what you have to do. And that's the only way we're ever going to fix the problem we have. And it's not going to be overnight. It's going to be – it's going to take time. I mean, we have got to earn the respect of the people. That's what we have to work on. And that's, that's my main goal, just earn the respect, and then and the other stuff will fall in place with your team. Which helps is you're already coming in with a lot of respect from the people because of your many years in magistrate. So, you know, mm-hmm. that, right. that does go a long way. And, and I'm sure I, did, I didn't make everybody happy as a, as a magistrate because you think about it, it's 50-50 shot. You know, yep. somebody's going to be happy and somebody's going to be mad. But, but I approached it and I tried to educate them and tell them why. You know, I, I, did, I wouldn't explain my decision, but I, I made them understand that this is a procedure that you have to go by. And if you... If you're a deputy and you win in the magistrate's office, then you presented your case well. If you lose, something was wrong. You, you, you missed a key part of evidence or you should have, should have had this done or that done. And, and you have to – and that's part of the training process. I, I feel like that I can train, train them in better courtroom procedure, which is going to help the conviction rate. And, and that's, that's a key. You know, there, there's, there's more to it than handcuffing and putting them in jail. You have to follow up with that and 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 do the and do your the legwork and, and in order to get that conviction. You should take your charge personally, to to the point of where you 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 want to make sure you got all your eyes dotted and your T's crossed. What will you do the first ninety days of your reign uh, to make changes that uh, we need to have? What is the about the first thing you're going to do in the first ninety days? Well, I mean, it's it's really hard to say that because you don't know exactly what you need to fix yet. I don't know because I'm on the outside looking in. Uh, I, I say you, I'll go in and and evaluate and and talk to people and and find out. You know, I've, I've got to put my hands on something in order to make decisions. And so, you know, and, and that's what I said a while ago. The the leadership part of this is you go in there and you talk to the people that's there and you see what you know, what, what their actions are, what they've got to say. And, and you give them the benefit of the doubt. You have to. I mean, you can't just say, I'm going to go in there and I'm going to fire the whole staff. That ain't, that's not what it's about. There's good people right. there. I've been around them for a long time. There's good people there. And, and, and I just want good, qualified people. Qualified people who know right from wrong, good, sound judgment, and will do the right thing because that's, that, that is what it's about. 
like I said before, if you got the authority or the power to take a man's freedom, make sure why you take it. Don't do it because you have a gun and a badge. Make sure. Do you have anything in back of your mind that, uh, you know, we got, of course, like most cities, most counties, drug issues uh, for any type of uh, maybe grant or something for uh, some of the ones that gets repeatedly arrested for doing drugs, uh, a, a rehab facility or uh, some kind of program that they can follow through uh, to help them get off drugs instead of uh, bringing them into jail, back out of jail again, doing the same thing. You know, you see, of course, being imagine a lot of repeat drug users. Yeah, I mean, it's, you know, if I sit here and tell you that I can, I can completely annihilate the drug problem, I'd be lying to you. I think it's, it's, a, it's a team approach. Now, you don't have unlimited resources or staff to actually work narcotics and do assist in the, in the programs for help. Now, there are a lot of churches and, and programs out there that's willing to take people in, and I think you can, you can work with them and, and make recommendations or say, hey, you know, give them literature or something to get them on that path. But the, the bottom line in, our, in the drug situation is this. You have got to want to get off drugs yourself. You know, we can have all the programs in the world. We can throw all the money at you in the world. But until you make your mind up that you hit rock bottom and that you want to do better and make a better life for yourself, I mean, that's, that's a personal decision that you've got to make. And if I can assist in that or, or the, the deputies or investigators or whoever, narcotics can assist in that, you know, I, I think that's a great thing. But it's going to take a team effort. We're going to have to work with alcohol and drug abuse and some of the treatment centers as far as making recommendations, and even if we can help with resources. That, that's the main thing. But, but the drug situation, you can't, you can't just say it's a Union County thing. You have to actually, you have got to have a working relationship with the state, federal, and, and other local law enforcement. I mean, the sheriff's departments that surround this county, Cherokee County, Newberry, Chester. I mean, you, you have to work with those guys. And, and those assets, when you put all the assets together, it makes a stronger team. And it's all about teams. If you think that you're a superman and you can be the sheriff and you can just take care of everything, you are mistaken. And, and I've never been a sheriff, but I'm saying I, I, don't, I don't see it happening because I'm, I'm a sensible person, and I think that it, it's going to take teamwork. It's going to take people with different skills put together as, as valuable in different areas to bring that all together. And it's going to take a while because you've got to build these teams. You, you've got to get them where they can function. Right. Okay. Do you think we in Union County has a drug problem? I know we do. Yeah. There, there's been there's been several deaths recently that, that I'm aware of that I've that I, you know that I mean it's drugs. That's the bottom line. And and you know in the old days you could you know with marijuana and stuff like that. I mean you 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 had a a, a you know there was a, a trail that you could a money trail or or they had to get it here somehow and 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 you know you could just track those down and maybe crack that and get into it but now i mean people are making drugs in their homes and there's a lot of homes you know and so you can't you can't be right on top of like the meth issues but there, there's a prescription drug problem i don't care what anybody says That's right. it starts there yeah. and then it leads to other things and they're trading prescription drugs for anything whether it be you know uh food stamps whatever i mean yes it's a you know it's a it's a trade i mean that's all it is but there's a serious problem going on and, and in, until, like I said, we can't wipe out the whole situation, but we can actually work together. And, and you got to be in touch with, I, I still say with the prescription drug deal, you need to talk to the doctors and see and let them know what's going on. And if, and if you've got a doctor that's actually pumping these pills out there, that's, that's part of your problem. I I, a, you know, I you got to address it. For you. Um, um, what was your view on the item that was brought up to pass by the superintendent uh, about him taking over the roles of or, or overseeing the sheriff's office. You're talking about the supervisor? Yeah. You said superintendent. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I don't, <laughs> school district. Yeah. <laughs> well, I know that, but, but I mean, I, I just, I, I don't think that is a, a good idea. And, and like I said, if, if county council and the supervisor, they would like to have some, 
oversight, I welcome. I welcome oversight. I love it because oversight keeps me clean. It keeps me clear. And, and that's what I'm about. I won't be transparent. But like I said, in, in the South Carolina law enforcement accreditation, if you look at that, there's so many checks and balances as far as, um, like I said, audits and the evidence, uh, even just your files, the way your files are organized. I mean, it, it really gets down. They will actually come in and help set up, my understanding, help set up this program to get you accredited. And, and once you're accredited, it's cut and dried policy procedure. And, and that way, they don't have to worry about oversight. I mean, I, I, think, I think that the sheriff's department should be audited, me personally. I mean, I mean it's yeah. what have you got to hide? I don't care if you know how much money's in my drug fund. What is it? I mean, I'm not going to get a, an award at the end of the year if I got a quarter of a million dollars. Exactly. It's, you know, it's, it's a drug fund. So yeah. we've done our job if we've, if we've built it up. But if there's nothing there, something's going wrong. So yeah. I want people to know. I, I want them to check. I don't mind them asking me questions. And that's the way I approach everything because you, if, you, if you have nothing to hide, then you can always tell the truth. And, and you'll, do you plan on trying to get in that accreditation? I do. I do. And, and like seems, I said, it, like yeah, I mean, it, 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 it takes – it takes some power away from the sheriff, but I mean, you know, at this point in time in, in Union County, it's not about a, a one man show. What about their program? Like, that's something to possibly look well, I, into. I don't think. I, I mean, necessarily the Dare program. Mm -hmm. it, it it didn't. I'm not saying it didn't work, but financially it wasn't feasible. I right. think, and that's why they went away from it. But that's why you got the school resource officers now in every school. Those guys, and they have training for them, and I'm not sure. I, I, maybe one has been yeah. in training so far that we've got here, but all of them, in my opinion, need to go and will go. Yeah, and it's kind of funny that you say it like that. I've never really thought about it from that point. You know, we always look at the sheriff to be somebody to induce a D.A.R.E. program, but you would think that would be something that the educational system would yeah. pay for to make sure that they have somebody to come in right. to do that. So I've never really I never really thought about it like that. That's a good but, point. But, Jeff. you know, it's, it's, it's like this. I mean, you – you have to work with the superintendent of the schools. You have to work with the supervisor, county council. There, there's a bunch of people. I might not agree with everything they yeah, say. Yeah. I don't agree with everything they say, but I'm man enough to, when we got to get it done together, yep. I'm man enough to stand there and agree with them if, if, I, if I believe in it. And, and that's, that's, you got to work with people. You might not like their personal yeah. views or the beliefs, but you have to work with them. I mean, and, and it's whatever the, for the betterment of the community. I'll just have to do. I mean, yeah. I'm not going to go in and say I'm not budging. Right. You know, we, we can't say you, – if you, if you go in there with that attitude, it never works. Right. That, that authority overpowering, it never yeah. works. It's just, uh, you know, it's a dictatorship. What you do can't you, do it. What do you feel like – and I don't mean to step on anybody's toes here. What do you feel like sets you apart? Like when we go to compare you to these other candidates, what do you feel like – and, I, and I'm not talking about bashing nobody. I'm just, what do you feel like sets you apart to, to all these other candidates and what's going to make you successful in the long run for Union County? Well, I, I just think my vision sets me apart because I'm, I'm, I'm telling the people, the voters up front, we need change, and, and it's not a power thing. And I'm, I'm willing to do the South Carolina law enforcement accreditation. I mean, that, that's, that's taken a lot of, of – discretion from the sheriff away i mean it's not about a personal handbook it's not about my personal feelings of of how it should i, I shouldn't manage on my personal beliefs it should be a set guideline that we go by and that way everybody is, is treated fairly and i think that's what sets me apart because i'm willing to, to give up some of that power you know right. it's 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 not a power struggle i had power i was a judge i, I could do a lot of things but when it comes down to it i'm a man just like you are and everybody in this room and we put our pants on the same way, and, and we have to treat people with respect to get respect. And I have got more people's respect by treating them fairly. And, you and, and don't that's meet just a lot it. of people like that. Yeah, oh, you sorry. just, you know, you, you have to do that. I mean, if, if you got the approach where I am who I am and, and it's my way or the highway, you need to back up because you're wrong. Because everybody that you pass on the way up that ladder, you're going to pass on your way down. All right. Cool. Now, some, some, some sheriff's departments and all have uh, a program. I don't know if Union does. I hadn't heard if it does not. Uh, a scared straight program for juveniles yeah. that's uh, you know about to go over, yes. not over into the judicial system, but getting close to it. Uh, would that be some kind of program that, uh, that if a Union can don't have it, that you would be thinking about? Uh, because uh, I, I know from experience itself that that is a it, some it doesn't take effect on, but 
it really changes some some young person's life uh, by going through a, a program like that. Right, and and when I was with Probation Pro, uh, we we had a program called it was a Scared Straight program, and uh, I participated in that, and I actually took some offenders. But a lot of that's done through uh, Probation Pro and Pardon Services, where they actually will take the offenders court ordered. You know, they pretty much got to be court ordered to do that, uh, and, and let them go through a program like that and and see the inside of a prison. You know, it's, it's different than seeing the inside of a prison than seeing the inside of a jail. That's two different things. Right. So, you know, if they, they seen the inside, they were actually face-to-face with these inmates, and it made a difference in some. Uh, you had shock incarceration at, with probation parole, and, and that was a good program. But, like I said, it all comes down to you have got to get your heart right, and you've got to want to stop. Right. And I, I'm just saying maybe before they even got into the system, you know, uh, is well, – so someone mentioned uh, on here earlier about, uh, uh, and I can understand why he's too young too, bringing his child and letting him mm-hmm. see the jail, taking a tour of the jail, or taking right. a tour of this uh, for his son to see at a young age that, you know, this is what happens mm-hmm. like that. This is before they even get to that probation or right. to that step. Well, and, 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 and I think that is a, that would be something that I would be involved in with the SROs. I mean, the school resource officers, that is, a, like I said, a valuable asset. Right. And with their training, that, they can educate the kids. It, it, it's more to it than just being security at, at, at the schools. And, and I think they want to be more than that. They, they want to be involved because, like I said, that's valuable information you'll get for those kids. Those kids trust those officers. And, you know, and then they know they're there to protect them, and, and that's what they need. To, that's the perception they need to have. But, you know, I, and I don't know if the, the resources would allow it, but, I mean, I would definitely be interested in looking to, into some of these programs. But, you know, like I said, it, it's, it, it's not about what I think. I, I mean, you've got to have people communicating and letting you right. know what they, what they feel strongly about. And, you know, and I've said all along that what I wanted to do is just say every quarter, every six months, I want to get a diverse group of people from the community, pastors, you know, leaders, business leaders, just anybody, moms, dads, whatever. And, and I'd like to have a, a breakfast at one of the churches or, or one of the fire departments and have a breakfast or lunch or whatever and sit down and let's discuss it because th- those are the eyes of the community. I don't see everything as sheriff. And, and, and that's, that's why we need people. That's, that's why we need to involve them and have those meetings and get feedback and then you can build – you can build from there, and you got. But well, I know Mike Brokham is uh, on the school board there, and he had community. Brokham, yeah, <laughs> Brokham. <laughs> Broke what I say, broke arm. Uh, <laughs> but anyway, he uh, he had some community uh, forums for him to come at certain times. You know, he'd set it up and send out for them to come out and express their concerns and, and things like that and i think it's about what you're saying with that's community right. leaders uh and, and i think that's a great idea uh matter of fact i watched the old dragnet movie uh i stay up late at night too late uh and it showed uh joe friday and talking to some community leaders and their concerns and things and i thought you know that, that that's a good idea yeah, um, but, I mean, I, I just, I, I, that's, that's one of my main focuses because that's, that's going to really give a lot of feedback to the sheriff's department and, and, and solve a lot of issues in, in, in the community. So, Well, um, as y'all were talking, it's, we're still recording, so we're just going to keep it going, but the, the Internet it, it's getting it, real bad out there now. Yeah, it, just, it just died. It, yeah, it's, 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 I'm watching the camera. It's, it's, yeah, it's bad out there now, so uh, – we uh we definitely probably lost internet there. Well, we're gonna there. bring him back. So I mean, we we're gonna and it. I apologize, man. I mean, no, I, 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 I mean, we can't control it, but I do apologize I know, anyways. I Wait, we made we made this step. That's that's yeah. A big step. And I'm gonna like I say, I'll probably end up taking down the stream and uploading the recorded, so that way it's no interruptions, no no blank outs or nothing like that. That way people don't log off because they'll see issues in the stream but not in the recording so again i apologize and we made the disclaimer you know it's not we're taking it down to edit anything out it's just we're putting it back up to have well you'll clearly see there's no edit in it you'll you'll be able to see real easy but except um, where we have to piece together just that one part at the beginning where it first went out but i may not even use that because that was just where we were talking and that wasn't That's Jeff's interview. I, that could be true, but I <laughs> we'll yeah. see what I do. But um, you know, so I, I'll, I'll save it. I have some more questions, but I, I just want to save it to where. 
because I mean, man, it just looks like there's a freaking hurricane oh, yeah, out there right now. It's bad. it's bad. But um, Jeff, I, I again, I apologize. Sorry oh, about you know it, it, but it will get uploaded and everything. It's just him, you know. We do. Uh, we do. Thank you though for giving us your time. Yeah, I, like, I, the the big chunk of the show, it all it just went out probably about two minutes ago. So the entire show was uh, pretty much broadcasted yeah. just right here at the end. So and honestly, um, it looks like you got a lot of good feedback uh, with the viewers. Uh, uh, and right. and and we're gonna finish it up by letting you uh, kind of just say, but hopefully the power <laughs> the power hold out for us, but. Uh, if you want to just kind of give us um, where people can possibly get your signs, uh, any kind of uh, uh, candidate, candidate uh, shirts, Endorsed hats, and door anything like that. Maybe your pitch. Um, you know, whatever you want to tell people. And and again, I apologize about the storm and stuff, but uh, we 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 made it through for the most part. But we will have you back, Jeff. I All promise. Right, that's fine. Just let me know when. Yes, sir. So you go ahead and you just kind of let us know where they can. Uh, find uh any kind of shirts or anything what they yeah. need to do to get in contact with you okay uh you can just go to my uh sheriff's page uh jeff bailey for sheriff okay. and uh you can leave a message on there if you're actually needing uh signs or, or anything like that don't have any t-shirts right at the moment but uh oh yeah. i may have you hooked up but uh <laughs> there you go there we go we can, we can look at that yeah but, uh just just uh message me on on that and i'll get with you and get your signs out because those signs i mean if 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 you get a sign. I mean, I put it in people that are requesting it. So I, those signs in people's yards are people asking for it on, on my yeah. sheriff's page. So understand that. And what I want people to understand is, um, you know, we have, we've had a lot of problems in Union County over the years, and it's time that, that we make a change. I'm telling you that I've, I've dedicated myself. I did it four years ago and, and two years prior to that. I've, I actually uh, uh, made some reports and, and, and tried to do the right thing. It didn't work out. That's why I run for sheriff last time. But I want the people in Union County to know I'm a fighter, and, and I've gave six years. It's been six years I've been fighting, and I don't plan to give up any time soon. So I'm fighting for the right thing. It's up to the voters at the end of the day on June 9th yeah. or, or, or November, if I make it that far. It's up to the voters to make this decision, and it's your decision to make. But I'll promise you this, and I'll give you my word, that I will do everything in my power to bring the respect, the dignity, integrity, the morals back to the Sheriff's Department and Union County. I want people to be proud to say they're from Union County. That's my goal. And if I can complete that, I, I'm sorry, I didn't mean to say I, if we can, because it's a team effort. It's going to take our people in the community and, and, and the officers. But um, I just want people to trust in me. And, you know, if, if you don't think I did a good enough job, Four years from now, if I'm elected, you know what to do. That's right. And I can take it like a man. So if, if uh, you know, if I don't do what I tell you, hey, no regrets. That's it. I, I, I did my best, and and uh, it's, it's going to be an uphill battle. I promise you that. Yeah. But I, I promise you I'm not going to give up on the people of Union County because they deserve, they deserve better. Union County is better than what we have been put through. Yes, sir. The I people of Union County is it's just you're better. I you're agree better with now. that 100%. Trust me. We can, we can do this together. And uh, I, I hope you'll get out on June 9th and vote for me. And uh, let's see if we can push this thing on in November, and we'll, we'll go from there. But always remember, I won't let you down. Well, we appreciate you, Jeff. All and, right. uh, and again, I apologize about the uh, – I wanted to check the Internet one more time just in case we could have got the ending on there. But it's, it's – Charter's completely down right now. <sighs> but uh, we're going to try to beat the power, guys. I don't want the, the recording to get knocked off. So – we do apologize to y'all, but we will have Jeff back um, to uh, maybe go over a few of the things that might have gotten, you know, but for the most part, the entire interview, I believe, was aired good. We had a little audio issue. Again, the storm was just kind of. Hopefully, we'll, um, we'll try to do that before the debate. Oh, we will. Yep. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, at least before the election, but we'll definitely get Jeff back, and I will make sure to look at the uh, forecast before uh, before we <laughs> do anything. And uh, I appreciate him so much. It's just like it was just one thing after another. First, it was Corona, then Dad, and, and now this storm's just wanting to be a pain in the butt. But no matter what, he's fighting through it, and he's dedicated to Union County, and I, I I'm uh, wishing him the best of luck, and I appreciate you coming, uh, Jeff. And I enjoyed uh, it. Thank you. and uh, we're going to go ahead and sign off. And guys, again, we appreciate y'all watching tonight. Uh, thank y'all, uh, Mr. Jerry. We'll we'll bring Mr. Jerry up on the screen. Uh, uh,
How, how was it? How did you enjoy that microphone? Uh, well, I, I liked it right here. It's just my arm's real tired. I can't lift my arms now. <laughs> Above it to drive? Yeah, because it's a, it's you a know, noodle. Look, this, this is, he- <laughs> tell them, Patty, how heavy it was. <laughs> It, it, it took her off the table. It really did. But we enjoyed it, I think. No, uh, she's seen a cookie on the floor. and she It was, a, it was a great, great uh, interview. Uh, Jeff did a great job and I appreciate so. it. Uh, and, it, you know, seeing you face to face like that, you know, we, we see the honesty in your face and, uh, and what you're saying. So we do, we do appreciate that. All right. Thank you, sir. I appreciate it. Mike, uh, anything you got left, sir? Uh, just thank you for coming. Um, I think he did a great job. Uh, I think this is one of the best uh, interviews we had. Uh, very detailed. Yeah, and, very you know, honest. Very, uh, you can, your integrity speaks for itself, yeah. sir. Thank you. Um, that's, that's a compliment. Yeah. And uh, I think it was great, and I can't well, wait to do it. We again. just got to get him over to Free Will Baptist, and then if we don't <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'll it's, visit. Well, there you go. <laughs> that works, you, too. You, you do mean Presbyterian, right? No, 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 no. no. <laughs> <laughs> Preacher Sam Baines, I, I think a lot of him. Yeah, that's it. Mr. Jerry's a good one, and uh, uh, Preacher Sam, he's a good one too. Uh, he reached out to me when yep. when Dad died. I haven't had a chance to uh, to to go watch him preach since all this, but uh, well, probably. Well, we are be, streaming live now yep. because of Rona. Yes, so. yes. So I, I'll be definitely going and uh, checking him out. Lockhart just seems to have a good good. Yeah, step a, of churches you community. know it's a good community yeah. of church so uh we appreciate you jeff <laughs> guys y'all be careful tonight uh we'll i'll get this uploaded before i leave i'll i'll have it uploaded and hopefully it'll be on there before before the night ends but uh i didn't do my hand man. you you're still on the screen so uh guys y'all take you care did it. Yo, you <laughs> just did it so it's over with mike you can't do it twice it's bad luck so <laughs> now i'm on the screen so guys we love you y'all take care thank y'all for yep. watching sorry about the glitch but you know we will Wait, not apologize no more. Kyle. There, there is a tornado that's pretty much like it's ripping off the front of the building there, and we're still <laughs> able to kind of do this. So I, I don't know how much to apologize for, but uh, we appreciate it, Jerry. Yeah. Thank you for your help again, Mike. Thank you, Jeff. Anytime. Good luck to you, brother. Thank I appreciate y'all. We love and, you. Uh, we love y'all, and uh, we will see y'all again next time. And we're going to go out with the uh, little outro but, that we have. Bang. Y'all take care. No, not this time. Take care. Bye bye. <laughs> What's up, guys? This is Kyle from The KC Show. We appreciate all the support that y'all have been giving us. We're live every Tuesday and Thursday night at 7 p.m. But now we're also at YouTube, at The KC Show. Please go like, subscribe, and hit the notification button. That way you never miss a live, ever. Make sure you go check that out. We're going to be expanding to Twitter, Instagram. We got more to come. Guys, we got a lot of exciting giveaways and interviews coming up. It's going to get good. Lots going on. Don't miss it every Tuesday and Thursday, 7 p.m. Guys, stay with us. We appreciate you so much. Y'all have a good one.